Tournament football is tournament football. It's like the, the Champions League. You see yeah. the Champions League, it's 13 games to the final. Mm. But anything can happen in them 13 yeah. games. The Germany game was the turning point for me that I thought we could actually go on and do something. Really? Because every big team over the last couple of years, apart from, I think, Spain, away. In yeah, that, Seville, that, that win was... Yeah, we've not really beat a top, top nation. Yeah. So when we beat Germany, and I think the crowd helped massively, it was yeah. probably the best atmosphere I've ever been involved in, club or country. Brilliant. It was incredible. Yeah. I think they helped us get over the line. But as soon as we won that, I thought to myself, we can actually go on and do something here. Yeah, yeah man. No, <laughs> I got a side of money in Davis. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. When I try to give my opinions, I try to give my opinions. That I fully feel. Not bad, I tell you to be fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, I agree with oh, all Tim T. We're no, meant to be mates. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Tea with Tim Z. Thanks to EA Sports, I am joined by the absolute legend, Carl Walker. Carl, how are you doing, my brother? How are you? Mate? You good? Yeah, very well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. No, more than, more than welcome. Um, well, OK, first off, uh, a little shout out. We're here, obviously, because you uh, teamed up with Campaign Against Living Miserably, yep. a mental health charity, um, bringing out uh, a kit and a little capsule available in FIFA 22. Um, early May. First off, uh, for you, how important was it? Was it doing something like that? I know mental health and football is obviously a massive thing. So. Yeah, you know, as I say, it, it's important. It, I think it's vital, especially in this day and age with the social media, mm. um, the online abuse that players could get or anyone could get. Yeah. Not just footballers. Um, we're talking to anyone, and you know, it's important to you know keep the right frame of mind and make sure that you know upstairs is working correctly and you're thinking straight. Yeah, for sure. Now, it is tea with Tim Z. Uh, we have a tea here. Are you a tea man? Yes, I am. Because, I mean, it's a Yorkshire tea, isn't it? It is definitely Proper a Yorkshire, Yorkshire tea. tea. I love that. <laughs> how, how do you have your tea? Um, I like, these are a good mug. The mug's important to me. See, these I brought from home. Yeah. Don't worry, I wash them, okay. everything. Uh, yeah, the, the mug's... Cruze, yeah? Very good. The mug's important. I don't like a too thick a rim. Okay. Like, oh. So, like, when you're sipping, like... You're, you're going into the details of the actual dimensions of a mug. But it needs to hold a good tea. That's true. And it needs to retain the heat yeah. as well. A cup can't just be a cup. You need to have a good That's cup. Like, he yeah. loves his tea You need so to have a good much. cup. I just go, yes, yeah, a tea. I'll have it. Yeah. Um, lovely. I mean, I, okay, so Yorkshire tea, that's your, that's your tipple. Mm. Um, I wanted to start... I mean, you're literally one of... The, you've been one of the best right backs in the world for as long as I can remember now. Um, I just wanted to start by saying... Um, at City, mm. the levels you've reached and your journey through that from, you know, from Championship Football, yeah. Sheffield, Sheffield United, at the absolute top level, like, how difficult is it to, to cut it at that level? Because you've seen so many like, talented players come through that mm. just don't quite make it for one reason or another. What, do you, what has been your kind of, like, secret to, to success in that regard? It's hard because I always am my worst critic. Mm -hmm. So no one on the outside or friends or family could tell me that I've had a bad game or had a good game more yeah. than myself. I try and stay level-headed. Um, I try and always make sure that I'm going back to basics and going back to the things that I know that I'm good at and playing at my strengths. Okay. But I think also as well, you have to think about the players that I've played with. I've been very fortunate to play in very good teams, whether mm. that's at Manchester City, Tottenham, Aston Villa, Sheffield United and QPR at the time, and even Northampton when yeah. I was there. So everyone's kind of contributed to that, but as you say, I think it all comes down to, you know, that 5% that what's up here. We can all play football. Mm -hmm. We've all got what it takes to be a professional footballer. But it's about making, you know, the right decisions at the right time. So that mental aspect? Yeah, you've got, on a football pitch, I can assure you, and I probably speak for every footballer out there now, but everyone goes out there wanting to be the man of the match. Mm. That's a fact. But you have a split second to make a decision, yeah. and that decision could go good or bad. Yeah, because I was like, I'm fascinated by like, you get so many um, unbelievable players in, in the Championship League One. Like, I mean, you've seen players from League One in the Championship, um, Jamie Vardy, for example, yeah. making it up to Champions League football, which yeah. he has to got. Mm. Like, there, there are so many good players that I, it's just hard to. Can you even equate like those different stages of football? Like, what really does make the difference between a, a team in Championship? compared to like the team in the Premier League, for example? Like, is it, is it 
physical? Is it is it mental? Is it is it just pure technical ability? Or of course, it, it's technical ability. It's obviously technical ability within the eleven as well. Mm. So maybe a championship team. You're looking. You've got three, four decent Premier League players that yeah. could definitely play in the Premier League. But the other ones are maybe lacking in technical ability, lacking in pace or strength or yeah. mentally. Once you get to the Premier League and you establish yourself as a Premier League player, I think it's all to do with upstairs really, and how yeah. much you want it. Okay. Um, I've been fortunate enough in my career to play with and alongside very good right backs where I've had to make sure that my standard is always high. Mm. When I signed for Tottenham, I was the sixth right back. Really? Well, who was it at the time? So there so was 20... Choluka, oh, yeah. Hutton, Chimbonda, Gunter, Norton, and then me. And Ka obviously, so Carl Ka Norton yeah. went with you as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but he was the one that played the season, you know, yeah. the full season for Sheffield United. Um, I played only five games and probably kind of jumped on the back of his deal. Okay. Um, got my move to Tottenham and then that's when I signed and it, there were six right backs in front of me. But I kind of didn't think of, well, there's six in front of me, I've got to get past six. It was just like, take your time. When your time is ready to come, it'll come. And I did have to wait um, two seasons. So I did six months, came back, played a couple of games when they got into the Champions League, when Tottenham got into the Champions League. Mm. That season, after that, thinking, oh, I played a few games, had a little bit of an injury, thought I'm going to get, get a sniff and we talk about you know, mental health, but that was a little kickback for me because it was like, well, I played a few games, I thought I'm going to get in the team and I didn't. Yeah. Next minute I know I'm at QPR, Loftus Road, playing championship football again, back out on loan, but you know, I've got a very good network base around me. My friends and my family have always stayed the same. Mm. I don't have many friends, you know, I keep a very small circle. Mm -hmm. And they've always stayed the same. You know, I've had my agent since I was 16. And he's always been, you know, the word of encouragement for me yeah. and everything like that. And he just said, you know, we're going to go to QPR and you're going to show them what Tottenham, what they're missing. Mm. And I remember it to this day, we played Bristol City on the last game of the season. Uh, well, not the last game, the last game before my loan ended. Mm. And uh, my agent come to me and he said, oh, um, Aston Villa want to take you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. On, a, on want, a permanent yeah, though? No, on a, per, uh, on a loan for the other half for of the, the season. Next, okay, yeah. So I was like, no, no, I don't want to go. He was like, what, what do you mean you don't want to go? I was like, I'm happy here. Okay. So I was playing at QPR. The first game I think we lost was my last game against Bristol City. We didn't lose. We was top of the league, we was flying. Yeah. And it was like, I'm in my happy place now. But then it's a Prem side that's but then, exactly. effectively. So yeah. then it was a Premier League side and Gerard Houllier was the manager. Yeah. And he called me and said, Kyle, like, whenever I can play you and whenever you fit, you will play. Amazing. So it was the opportunity there now, OK, you have to see if the grass is green on the other side. Mm. And you've got to test yourself at Premier League football to make sure which my goal was to play for Tottenham. So Harry Redknapp at the time, he kind of, you know, used to say, well, he's not got Premier League experience. Obviously, managing a, a club like Tottenham, there's expectations, there's pressure. He needs to make sure that he's getting results and mm. can he trust the, was I 20 or 19 at the time to, to give him them results and trust me at the back line. So when I played for Aston Villa and I went and did well, got into the England squad, that was another, you know, a massive boost for me where I thought, you know what, I can actually go back yeah. to Tottenham now and fight for my place. Yeah. But I had to come over hurdles to get to where I wanted to get to. Yeah. And that was like, I mean, little did you know, I guess that was, that was almost the beginning of your journey as well, because since then, Progressing at Tottenham, absolute key player there, being snapped up by Man City for, I mean, 45 mil, which was mm. a, almost unheard of for a yeah. defender at that. What, 2017 or was that? 2016? Nothing now, is it? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Now you're thinking, yeah. <laughs> Cheap as chips now for Carl Walker. <laughs> um, but uh, the levels now that you've reached are, for me anyways, it's unbelievable. Like, the step up, for example, for you going to... Champions League football, not just Champions League football, because obviously you had that at Spurs, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, but competing for the Champions League, like those difference in levels, like was it was it a big jump up? Even though you you were playing the same competition, that step up f to get into that Man City side and the levels you were playing at, w was there like a notable step up that you had to make? Uh, it's it's strange because we all play football because we love the sport. Yeah. 
So I was playing football at Tottenham because I love football. Mm. I'm not saying that I don't love football now, but it's more calculated now. And I okay. don't know if that's because of the manager, because of the team, because of the standard of the Premier League has got, you know, definitely, Crazy, oh, definitely yeah. better. So now it's more of like, OK, Kyle, you can't just let your ability get you through games or you can't just let your, pe your speed and your pace or, you know, the team or the players that you've got around you get you through the games. Yeah. Now it's kind of like, well, I'm actually going to have to think about receiving the ball on the right angle, making sure that I take my touch at the right pace because the, the standard of the Premier League now is... I can say is definitely one million times got better. Yeah, got better the over best the best you've years. ever experienced. Just some of the wingers, some of the wingers. But I, I find that amazing that like even just you know moving club and I'm guessing Pep's had a lot to do with yeah. this as well. Like it's almost you say like even just you know the way you touch and turn out mm. or something like that. Something as small as that. Like obviously professional footballers know about that aspect of the game, but is it just you think of it just to find a, a finer detail almost? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Tottenham, you pass, someone passes your ball, you control it, and then let's get going. Yeah. My, my positioning, obviously, definitely with Pochettino in the last couple of years where we played wing-backs, was a little bit more different where now I'm kind of like an inside full-back. Yeah. Kind of on the cover, mm -hmm. you know, mopping up any danger, yeah. that which I did the job as well for England. Yeah, we'll get on to that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's just, I think maybe experience has helped me. Okay. You know, going through setbacks, going through highs and lows mm. in club football, you know, obviously relating back to England, but I'm, I'm 31 now, I feel so fit, I feel, you know, I feel just like I was 22. Seriously, I don't think that little things have changed, obviously. Yeah. Sometimes on recovery and stuff like that, it takes a little bit longer where I could have played a game at 22 and then played the next day, it wouldn't have been a problem for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I do feel it a little bit, but I make sure that I prepare myself like, we, I, I love it that we've got a game every three days because that's what I want to do. That's yeah. what I live for. I love for playing football training. I'm not the best trainer, but on the Saturday, that's where, you know, that's my happy place on that pitch. Yeah. And uh, last bit on, on City as well. I, I feel like watching you guys over the last few years, do you think people give you guys enough credit for how good you've you've become and how good you've had to be like even sit for example like the 2018-19 season like reaching 100 points yeah. ridiculous like, yeah. so so impressive and you had to be that good to to fend off Liverpool for example they've been near perfect for the yeah. last few years and win those Premier League titles do you think people give Man City uh, like Pep and you guys enough credit for how good you've been do you, do you think people even realise how good you've actually been I don't think we realise ourselves okay. how good we've actually been over the last you know, this is my fifth season now. Even when we played really well and Liverpool went on won it, they was just a better team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to take your hats off to them. But my first season, we achieved what we achieved, which was the 100 points. Yeah. The second season, we then go and do 98 points, yeah. I think it was, and get the formidables. But it's not really talked about yeah. where you guys, the Invincibles, it gets talked about a lot. Obviously, yeah. Arsenal went and achieved something that was incredible, never to be beat in a Premier League season. Every Premier League game is difficult. Every 38 games is, you couldn't, you couldn't pick and say 100%, I, I put everything on it that we're going to win this yeah. game because you don't know what's yeah. going to happen. We revert back to Tottenham the last week. You know, they're not really in form at the minute and yeah. they come to the Etihad and put in a really good performance. Yeah. Next week they go to Burnley, 1-0, that, that's football. Yeah. But, Again, we come back, that's setbacks that you have to deal with as a professional. And I always said to, I said to the lads in the dressing room after the Tottenham game, the best thing about football is there's always a next game and mm. you can put it right. And some people, whether they are football fans or not football fans, that game will be gone. But the next game, you can't lose again. Yeah. And that's the mentality that we have to have in the dressing room is we can have a slip up. We're not perfect. We all, we're, we're all human. But the next game, you have to make it right and make sure that people realise that we are still in this title race. So, so do you think it's, a, it's almost a good thing that you, even you lot didn't realise how good you were because it kept you motivated almost or, or striving think, to be better? Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's with the players and the squad that we've got. Yeah. You can't afford to, you can't afford to have an off day. You've got, you you got three squads that are just world class. Yeah. So. No, I mean, you, you see it in year about it all the time, pet roulette. Yeah, it's yeah. It's literally, we, we have a team full of world-class players yeah. and he knows that 
he can trust each and every one of us. Yeah. And every one of us is going to put in, you know, a good performance. Mm. So in training, yeah, last word on City, yeah. just, it's, it fascinates me. Um, in training, you're doing the wrong, everyone knows about Pep's rondos and, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. I was trying to think beforehand who would be the best player at Man City at rondos. And I honestly couldn't choose because you have the most ridiculously technically gifted players. Mm. C- could you like pick one that is, that kind of stands out? Don't know. Technical ability, technical ability. Apart from yourself, obviously. No, I'm nowhere near <laughs> <laughs> some of these. I'm the, I'd like to say I'm, but I'm nowhere near. Technical ability, not in any order, so I wouldn't want to put them in any order. Yeah. My top three are Zinchenko. Oh wow! Okay. Not in order. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zinchenko, okay. Mares, Silva. Okay, yeah, because I thought straight away, I was like, Bernardo Silva, surely up Yeah, Zinchenko, I didn't expect. He's incredible. Really? He's incredible, incredible. Two touches, head tennis, you know, the, the tennis, what the Brazilians play with the net. and you Oh, have to, yeah, 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 yeah. He's incredible. That's bizarre. I mean, so fair good. play, yeah. Yeah, so, so good. But I, again, frightening prospect. But then you're leaving the rainbow. likes of De Bruyne out. Phil Foden, yeah, Grealish. What are, you, what are you doing? Kinsella, which for a right back, oh, it, yeah. it's, it's scary. He's a right back, left back, left yeah, wing, it's scary. up front. But they don't come close to them three. Mad. Okay, that's good to know. Mm. That's nice. Um, you talked briefly about your, your pace and, and your age and how you feel inside yeah. and you still feel young. Um, everyone knows how, how quick you are. I mean, in my head, you've got quicker over your career. But I'd love if you, if you could possibly pinpoint a time of your career where you think you were quickest? Like at your absolute quickest? Because I'm saying last summer, no one could beat you in the, in the Euros. Yeah, last, last summer was obviously, personally it was a good tournament. I got into the team of the, the Euros yeah, and, did, yeah. you know, it was very unfortunate that we got to the final and couldn't get over the line. Mm. I would say probably the season before, the season, so 2017 I came to Man City, yeah. I would say 2015-16 was probably my quickest. Do you reckon? When me and Danny Rose was... Bombing up. Yeah, on the, yeah. On the, that's when I felt the fittest, when I was probably, you know, my leanest, and I felt that I could have really moved my weight. Okay. Yeah. But I probably, got, yeah. I probably got stronger and more powerful being at City. Okay. So that's because because even like playing playing for England and during the years you almost play that centre back role yeah. as like the yeah. sweeper. Yeah. As you were saying, like you f- you felt good. Did you almost feel like you you were such a giant at the back? Did you with every game feel like you grew in presence almost and you felt strong in your body that like no one could get past me? I felt strong. I felt fit because. <clears throat> In tournament football, you live, you breathe, you eat football. That is it. Mm. You're in, and especially with the circumstances that we was doing um, the Euros in with the lockdown. Yeah. We stayed in St. George's Park for six weeks mm. and we didn't move from each other. And you're doing things that you don't, you know, technically, I, I, I go to training, I come home and then I kind of have to take my football off, hat off and it's like, okay, I'm a parent now. Okay, yeah. I've got to do the things for the kids. Mm-hmm. And little things, just little things where the kids might have some chicken and pasta and technically I don't need pasta that night, but I'll eat some. Okay. You know, so it's the fine margins that there, it's like, well, you know what you're eating, you know what to do. There's the recovery, there's the gym, there's the ice baths. So 12 o'clock at night, if you wanted to go and do an ice bath, feel that I'm I'm a little bit leggy, you could do that. Where at home, you're going to at 12 o'clock at night, oh, I might have a cup of tea and a few biscuits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but it's, yeah, but it's yeah. just, it's, it's simple things like that. But, um, you know, I, I felt it was a good tournament, as I said before. Uh, but again, we come back to the mental side of it. Not many people know that I probably had to take a knock back in that tournament to then go and prove that I should be starting. So I started the Croatia game. And then the next game, I wasn't even in the squad. Was that... For any reason, it was that was that was Scotland. So we did Croatia. Obviously, we did well. Yeah, you, yeah. But then the next game, I wasn't even in the. Was it eighteen? Yeah. I was sat on the uh, in the stands. 
but uh, that's but but then also you think like there were so there were a lot of players who were omitted at different stages as well. Mm. So even like like Ben Chilwell or, or yeah. Trips, that yeah. you, who you know, Sancho for example. Yeah. Was it just? I don't know. Was it? Did it bother anyone really? Because it was almost. It seemed from the outside looking in, you were all so together, and there but was almost like a that's the thing, selfless yeah. thing of we're all just trying to get the same thing done. That's the thing is that the squad now. Is so together. I mean, you've heard so many players say this over yeah. the recent years. It's it's incredible. It's like club football. Yeah. So you sat there, and obviously, the manager came and said, like, he just wants to look at other pers personnel, and it feels that you know certain players would be better on the bench than me. As a 31-year-old, I'm two games into the tournament. I'm thinking, Phew. yeah, that's well, tough to take, man. Is this me? Kind of like, you know, um, I can't remember who played. I don't know if it was Rhys James or. I think it might trips. have been Trips. Was it Trips? Or was he uh, left right, back? Right. I don't know, but yeah. they go and have a good game, score two goals, yeah. or I'll get three assists, or whatever it could be. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm out the tournament now. I'm sat there okay. as a 31 year old saying, okay, lads, I'm here for you, but I'm not playing. I forgot that, yeah. But obviously, the manager put the trust in me, um, and the rest is kind of history. Yeah. But dealing with that when you're alone in your room, sat there thinking the world's against you. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing that I probably perform best, where I kind of say, okay, back I'm against the wall. You, yeah, almost. I'm gonna prove you wrong. Yeah, that's mad because no, I, no one would really even think about no, that. Like, no, uh, no England fan's gonna be looking back and go like, yeah, Carl almost didn't make the squad for no, that exactly. particular game because exactly. you just think, you know, I mean, you're so ingrained in that in that side anyway. I was, I wanted to talk about this anyway, but last summer, it, historic, like I think it was some of the best football like we've seen from, from mm. an England side. Yeah. Um, but for you being inside the camp and stuff, like we always hear going into these tournaments and stuff, England, super talented side, like got young talent and got a nice mix of talent, but experienced mm. heads or whatever. And we've never obviously quite delivered on it. But over the last few years, especially with like Gareth Southgate, yeah. it seems like yeah. we have. Did you feel like that though, going into it as a group? Was it, because obviously 2016 uh, wasn't pleasant mm. for a lot of people, but did you your mentality was it the same as those other tournaments or was there a feeling of like nah this is actually feels a bit different tournament football is tournament football it's like the the champions league you see yeah. the champions league it's 13 games to the final mm. but anything can happen in them 13 yeah. games the germany game was the turning point for me that i thought we could actually go on and do something really because every big team over the last couple of years Apart from, I think, Spain, away. In yeah, that, Seville, that, that win was... Yeah, we've not really beat a top, top nation. Yeah. So when we beat Germany, and I think the crowd helped massively, it was yeah. probably the best atmosphere I've ever been involved in, club it's or country. Spent. It was incredible. Yeah. I think they helped us get over the line. But as soon as we won that, I thought to myself, we can actually go on and do something here. Yeah. It's almost like you, you prove to yourself that you're like, we actually can beat. Because even then, people said that about the 2018 World Cup. Yeah. Got to the semis and was like, yeah, we haven't beaten anyone. I mean, we mm. didn't care. No. Because we suddenly won on pens. That, that thing's off our back. So it's like, oh, no, we deserve to be there. But people keep saying, yeah, but you haven't beaten a proper mm. side. Whereas that, I guess, yeah, it, it, it was different for that reason. I think the 2018 came down to experience. That's all I can put it down to. As we, in why we, we didn't go on we to lacked, do better. We lacked experience. Yeah. The players that we was had in the group lacked winning tournament football. Okay. Me included. Yeah. Me included. So um, you talk about international football, right? And can you even equate it to domestic football, like in terms of like the setups? Uh, I don't know, like the level. Obviously, it's world class footballers everywhere. But mm. is it more difficult than domestic football? Or is it just almost like a totally different game? It's a totally different game. You can't, yeah, no, you, you can't, can't equate it to like, because people, a lot of people say, like a lot of football fans, everyone knows like, saying, is that the alarm? Um, that like, ah, oh, this World Cup side, but ah, they're probably about like middle prem level, mm. or whatever. Mm. But for you, you just, you can't equate it. No, you a can't. Different form. I think it's just a totally different game. You've got to take and to count that you're playing with players that you don't play with in day in, day out. Mm -hmm. So you have to meet up on a certain period of time. You have a week to train together and then it's like, okay, game. Yeah. But where you go with City, I could probably play with Blindfold and know Kevin De Bruyne's movement. Yeah. I know what Riyad wants. Yeah. Or I know what Jesus wants or whoever plays on my side. Mm -hmm. With England, 
you have to play to your strengths, but you also have to adapt to other people's strengths. Okay, yeah. Um, then you take into consideration the refs. Oh yeah, true, yeah. Different, Different yeah. The pressure. Yeah, it's Mental, wild, yeah. it's crazy. So I don't think you could ever compare it, yeah. me personally. Okay, nice. And then last one, um, you say, like, as, you, as you've gotten older, obviously you're like looking after mm. yourself and stuff. And you talked about that, that final game that people play. Like you, it seems like, I mean, you've had such a long and successful career and you're still, yeah, as you said, 31. So yeah. you've still got plenty of years. Do you see yourself hanging up your boots like whilst you're at the top of the game? Because you are ab- at the absolute top. Say, for example, you win the Champions League this yeah. year and then next few years you're thinking, right, I'm going to hang, like, whilst I'm at City, best club in the world sort of thing. Or are you kind of doing that, like, Ashley Cole vibe where and Wayne Rooney where you're like playing you know you go back to your boyhood club and then you just play until because you love the game like yeah, wh- where I, do you I, see I will career? just go until my legs won't be able to go anymore until I think that I'm a burden on the team rather than a help to the team okay I don't think I'd do it um, is that just because you love football like yeah I, I don't know anything else <laughs> I don't know I've done it since <laughs> I, think I, anyone else does it, I don't know anything else so yeah for me to go into something, okay, you know, maybe, as I've said before, maybe punditry or something, but I don't know if it sits well with me yet. Okay, yeah. Because, as I said to you before, that no one wants to go out onto the pitch and not be the man of the match. Mm. For me then to start making a judgment on people as a pundit, it wouldn't sit right with me because okay. I'm kind of thinking, well, they didn't want to do that mistake mm. or they didn't want to make that stupid decision. It happens. And yeah. I know myself, it happens. Mm. So if I did, I would try and word it in a different way where it was kind of like, I get what they're trying to do, but maybe it was a lapse of concentration or it was something yeah. like that that's made them decisions go. But we go back to the question as football, I would go for as long as I can until I become a burden on a team and all right, I won't, I won't drop down too much because I yeah. feel the harder you drop down, the tougher it will yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, Jenny, yeah. You know, it's like diminishing returns yeah. almost, you know what I mean? So it's about staying at a, a league or a, a standard that's that's right for me. Okay. Um, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. You know, I, I still feel I've definitely got another five, definitely years in me. I love that. Mm. I mean, yeah, you're still getting quicker, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, so. we'll just keep getting quicker. And also, Same if it does get to that point, obviously you don't want to go to a certain level, but Old Hamptonians, if you do want to play on my Saturday league side, you know what I mean, you're more than welcome. We need a right back as well. So. Yeah, is he not good? He's all right. Yeah, he's not he, going to like he, you now. He's not your level, so <laughs> no. I, I'm sure he'll admit that as well, so he's all right. Um, Carl, thank you so much. No, thank honestly. you. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank um, you so much. And thank you so much, EA Sports, for, for making this possible. Um, make sure to check out the kit when it comes out on Volta Football, and we'll see you next episode. Cheers, mate. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank okay. you so much, man.